The 2018 film The Meg was a pretty big shark of a flick, but what about its recent sequel? I recently watched Meg to the Trench last month on Max, and of course it's on physical media, but is this recent hit sequel as good as its predecessor, or is this just one that should just completely have its jaws ripped out or something like that. Find out in this special spoiler-free review right now. This is Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual, bear known to as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a spoiler-free review of the 2023 sci-fi action flick Meg 2, The Trench, released by Warner Brothers, directed by Ben Wheatley, from a screenplay by John Hober, Eric Hober, and Dean Jorgaris, based on Steve Alton's 1999 novel The Trench. Of course, it's a sequel to The Meg, released in 2018, starring Jason Stam, along with Wu Jing, Sophia Kai, Paige Candy, Sergio Perez, Perez Menchetta, sorry if I mispronounced that, Skylar Samuels, and Cliff Curtis. Like the previous film, it follows a group of scientists who must outrun and outswim the titular megalodons when a malevolent mining operation threatens their mission and forces them into a high-stakes battle for survival. Now, this film might not have come to as close to its predecessor, but it still did our well and why the end got mixed reviews. Since its release back in August of this year, it made its premiere at the Shanghai International Film Festival a couple months before that in June. Now, before I get started on this, since it's spoiler free, if you haven't seen my review of the first film, click on that card and you can see my review of the Meg in case you might have missed it or if you want to see it again if you'd like. Okay, now let's get started with just a little bit of the story. Five years after the events of the first film, Jonas Taylor has been involved in fighting environmental crimes while also helping Ma One in exploring a further deep part of the Mar Mariana Trench where the Megalodon has been found. Following the death of Suyin Zhang, Jonas has been raising her teenage daughter Mei Ying alongside her uncle and Suyin's brother Juming Zhang who has acquired his father's company alongside wealthy financier Hilary Driscoll. Ma One has also been studying an 80-foot, that's 24-meter, female Meg called the Haki. That's H-A-I-Q-I, I may have mispronounced it, but like I said, I've watched this one time. Who was discovered as a pup and trained by Jiming in a reserve in Hainan. Recently, Haki has been acting erratically, leading to Jonas being considered despite Jiming's enthusiasm. Jonas and Jiming lead a routine submersible exploration to the trench, with Mei Ying stowing away to see the trench for the first time. Fellow Meg survivors DJ and Mac observe the group from the Man of One. On their way down, the subs are pursued by Haki, Haki who escaped captivity the previous night. The subs dive down through the thermocline to escape, but Haki forces her way through it anyway. Too much larger mix, a massive 170 foot, that's 52 meters, alpha male, and a slightly smaller 110 foot, that's 34 meters, beta male, appear and mate with Haki. While working on an escape plan, Jonas and his team discover an illegal mining operation in a station captured by the mercenary Montez, who has a vendetta against Jonas for his imprisonment some time before. Montez's crew was hired by Driscoll to covertly use the man one's access to trend to the trench to farm rare earth minerals that could earn them billions, and Montez kills his crew in an explosion to cover up their activities, which causes a rupture in the trench and grounds both Jonas and Jimung's ships. Now that's all the story I will tell you, so if you want to know what happens then, watch the movie. 
Now, what did I think of the film? Well, I'm gonna say it was it was fine and fair and why have you not quite as good as the first one though, because now I did have some issues with the film, but I'll get to those in a little bit. Anyway, the film did fine and what have you. It made three hundred twelve million work well, I mean three hundred ninety five million worldwide. Because it made did better overseas than it did in the US. It made eight just eighty two million, which was slightly less than its predecessor, but it did better overseas with three hundred and twelve million. However, when it opened it lost to the film that has another Warner Brothers film, which well, had been number one since its debut back in in July, which of course was, you guessed it, Barbie, the big film of the year. Ron Tomales has it at 28%, which that's less than its predecessor, saying it isn't without its fun moments, but the film suffers from a disjointed story that drifts for too long before finally delivering a few campy thrills. Yes, I agree. That is my issue with the film because. I mean, it does have some fun moments, but it doesn't get. But its story starts a little slow and why? I mean, it don't give us much more action. Well, it does gives a give us a little bit in the beginning, but doesn't get more good until later on. We don't get to see much more besides the megalodons and other creep and something else later on. Cause that means this film took a big hit in my score and rating rain for this one. Anyway, now uh, there's a negative review on RogerEbert.com saying, at least until the final half hour when he's finally free to unleash some monstrous chaos, this is one of the dullest films of the year applying poorly made giant shark movie that inexplicably lets the giant shark take a backseat to an evil underwater drilling operation. Vanity Fair said... The film is confident in its schlock piling on one ridiculous conceit after another at such a pace that the audience can't help but be swept up in it. This is a harder needle to thread than many filmmakers seem to think. It's not enough to just be stupid. But that's understandable and what have you. Anyway... Now, it was just released on physical media not so long ago, just a month after it premiered on Max, which is where I saw it. Now, in July, Weekly stated that there had been internal discussions about potential third installment. While its development depends on the success of the film, he hopes to continue the story as outlined in the novels by Steve Alton. Well, we'll see what happens. Now... We have Harry Gregson Williams on board to the Discord, and that was pretty good. And we got that same act that did that Mickey cover in the first movie, but only this time they did a different song. Not, and at least it was an original, and I could buy that. Mm-hmm, definitely. Now, as for our cast, we have Jason Sam back on board uh, as Jonas, and I really thought he was good. Uh, Wu Jing re is is Juming Shang, while Sophia Kai plays Mei Ying. Cliff Curtis, well, makes. Oh, let me see here. Returns as Mac, and and he was, he was good. And same with Paige Candy, who returns as DJ. <coughs> yeah, it was pretty... They were good and what have you. And we have Sergio Perez and Cher playing Montez. And Skylar Samuels plays Mal One Worker, Jess. And Sienna Gillory played Driscoll. Yeah. Anyway, so the cast isn't too bad, but overall, the film's a mixed bag and what have you. It's, it starts out all right and what have you, but it slows down a bit what have you. But I do like the um, kind of a, the deep exploration of the film and what have you, underwater and what have you, which that was good and what have you. 
but it just could be a little better. And I agree that we don't get much until the last bit of him, what have you. Come on. But at least it managed to pull off a few good um, intensifying bits and what have you. So overall, Mech to the Trench, it's fine and what have you. Just not quite as good as its predecessor, but I tried to do it to extreme depth. Excuse me. For my score, I'm going to give Meg to the Trench three stars. On a scale of 1 to 10, I give it a 6. So what did you think of Meg to the Trench? Let me know in the comment section below. If you liked the video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you a review of the 1978 film Magic with Sir Anthony Hopkins. So, if you like this, consider checking out these other aquatic-type disastrous-type films. I'll give you a couple of shark flicks I know of. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of the great classic Jaws from 1975. The upper right-hand corner is my, rev my review of James Cameron's The Abyss. Or if you would like, go to the bottom left-hand corner and see my review of Jason Sam's previous attempt after Meg 2, but this film bombed big time, and that's a spoiler-free review I did on Expendables 4. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.